Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, we're going to hook up the DMM Technology servo motors to the DYN2 servo amplifiers. We're going to download the software from uh, DMM Technology's website that communicates with uh, DYN2 servo uh, amplifiers and configures them. And then we're going to use Acorn to turn the motors. So let's go ahead and get started. There's really nothing to hooking up the motors. They come pre-configured. This is the motor cable. It only goes into the DYN2 servo amplifier one way. And this is the encoder cable connector. It also only plugs in one way. Uh, let's go ahead and plug them back in. Of course, it's all powered down. Okay. So here's my X, my Z, and this will be my rotary axis. Um, It'll eventually, hopefully, drive my turret on the uh, Emco Turn 120 lathe, but uh, that's a project for another day. Right now, let's just get these motors turning. So let's go to the computer and uh, download the software, and and uh, we'll configure the uh, the motors um, real quickly. I want to show you the uh, the cable that's required. This is the cable. It's basically a USB on one end and this plugs into the servo amplifiers on the other end. Um, once you download the software and install it, uh, you plug this into a USB port on your computer and then there's a utility to find the port so that uh, you can configure the DMM DRV software to communicate with uh, servo motors. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over to the computer and let's download the software. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go to DMM Technologies website to download the software. We're using the DIN2 series. We go down here to software, downloads, and then we're going to download the uh, installer package. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it. DMM DRV setup. Run. And we'll go ahead and click next. Create a desktop icon. Install it. Okay, Microsoft Net Framework is already on my computer. It's Windows 10, so I don't need to install it. So we'll close that. And we'll go ahead and finish. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB cable into the computer. And it should recognize the cable, install any driver. Okay, the next step is we need to, you see down here it says COM port not set, connection status not connected. So we want to go to connect. And since we don't know which USB port we're on, we'll do, we click on detect COM port. And it says possible COM port 3 and possible COM port 4. So let's go up here and try COM port 3 first. Try and set it. Okay, so uh, it says error communicating with a servo drive. So let's go ahead and try COM port 4. And let's set the COM port. COM port successful. And then you see down here it's connected. Okay, now that we're connected, we go to servo setting. DYN2, we want to read from the servo drive. And here's all the parameters. And uh, let's do a quick test of the motor. We click on constant speed and then we can gradually run it up. You don't want to run it up too fast or above the motor's rated RPM. There you can see it's running. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to change the uh, 
what they call the gearing number, which is the pulses per revolution. I'm going to change it to 2,000 pulses per revolution. And then we're going to go up here and click on pulse dir, which is a step and direction setting so that the drive will respond to step and direction signals. And we'll leave position servo alone and we'll go ahead and save all. Okay, so that one's saved. So that's all there was to it. I'm going to go ahead and set the other two up and then we'll go ahead and go into Acorn and configure it. Okay, we need to go into the Lathe Wizard to set up the drives. I was previously using a Gecko G540. So what we'll do is we'll go up here and we'll choose DMM, DIN2, DIN4. And then I'm going to go down here to E-Stop and I'm going to choose Normally Open because I don't have an E-Stop button on it. Uh, my limit switches are set to Normally Open, which is fine. That way I don't have a limit switch tripped. And let's go to Axis Configuration. All right, in Steps Per Evolution, you'll remember that uh, we set up the uh, DMM drives to 2,000 because of quadrature. It'll take 8,000 steps per revolution of the motor. So we'll set these all to 8,000. And we'll leave the overall turns ratio to 1. Um, it'll just simplify things when we do the bench testing. So when we call 1 inch, we should see one revolution of the motor on Z. Now interestingly, because this is a lathe, when we call one inch on uh, X, the motor shaft will only turn a half a turn. That's because when you're cutting uh, your part, you only take off half the diameter. And then uh, we'll just leave B as a linear axis for now. Um, eventually it'll become a rotary axis. So we go ahead and write the settings. Yes, OK. All right, let's go ahead and start CNC 12 lathe. Since my acorn was already running, I'll have to cycle the reset button. OK. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, set home. Doing simple home, no switches here. Okay, now I'm going to go in. I'm going to set my part zeros to zero just for reference. All right, we'll escape now. We'll go to MDI. Let's command a G0Z1, and that should turn this one revolution. And it did. Now let's do the X. Let's do a G zero X one. Let's command that one. Well, it only turned a half a half a revolution. Why is that? That's because this is set up for a lathe, and the X and the X axis is coming down on the part, so it's going to take off half the material. So if we want an inch, it's going to come down a half an inch, and it'll take it down to an inch. So it uh, looks like everything's working all right. Let's go back to G0X0. And it went back to zero. And let's go G0Z0. And that went back a full revolution to zero. Now let's look at our B axis. You see on the DRO, there's a B here. Now there's no buttons for that. This is hopefully to use as a tool changer. So let's call it G0B1 and it should turn one revolution and it does so uh, from a bench test standpoint everything's working well um, the motors are ready to go on to the lathe and then we'll configure um, all the lead screw parameters and so forth in the wizard once everything's mounted up so success we've got everything bench tested we're ready to start installing it on the lathe